Statistics and Excel, combining two histograms on one chart, part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds and looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet. However, we started building it in a prior presentation starting with just our data set. If you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells on it so you can get right to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab is where we started with just our data set so we can practice formatting cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. So in prior presentations, we took our data set, which is related to heights. We made a table out of it. We created a histogram with it, which has a pretty nice bell-shaped type of curve to it, given the fact that we're dealing with heights, which you would expect would have a nice kind of center point and then taper off in, in this type of format. And we have a pretty large data set that we are drawing from. Then we wanted to get to the point where we can have two data sets on one chart, two bell curves or two histograms. So in order to do that, we made our own bucket sizes uh, and then created another histogram, but this time we, cre we created it not with the histogram tool, but with uh, the, the bar chart tool. And so now we wanna create another data set so that we can practice putting the two data sets together on one chart. So to do that, I'm gonna take this data set, the whole thing, I'm gonna copy column A. So I'm gonna uh, put my cursor on column A, right click and copy the entire thing. I'm gonna bring that on over to uh, a tab over here. Let's bring it on over to like AA, for example. Oh, we put it on Z, let's put it on Z. Right click and I'm just gonna paste it, uh, just paste it normal because it's hard coded numbers. So that looks good. And then I'm simply going to um, imagine that this data set is just for men. Now, it's, it's not necessarily the case that that is the case, but I'm just going to imagine that's the case. And then I'm going to put the next one is for women. Now, I just want to make a data set to practice with. So I'm going to just take this every number over here and take 95% of it. So, so that's obviously not an actual data set, a sample of the data. What it will give us uh, if we imagine the, the graphs, it, it'll shift the whole graph over, but the shape will be much the same. So that's what we would imagine to be the case. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to say equals uh, left to the, to the left once that 6850 times 0 0.9595%. And when I hit enter, it'll populate the entire uh, area, given the fact that we're in a table format. So now I've just made a whole nother data set, which is basically just shifting, uh, shifting the whole bell shape uh, if we were to graph it. So let's go ahead and graph it now. I'm gonna use just a normal histogram just for the new set of data. So I'm gonna select the entire data set, go into the insert tab, charts, and then I'm gonna create a histogram just to see what that looks like. So here's our histogram, gonna make it larger and 
and just kind of compare it. So now we can compare this histogram to what we made on the other side. How I made this really wide last time. So I can compare that to this histogram, right? So this histogram's taking the full screen. Let's make this one a little wider, maybe. So that it, they're kind of, okay. So, you know, you've got basically the same shape, but the center point of this one is around uh, 67 to 68. And then uh, the center point of this one looks to be uh, around 64, 64 or to 65 or so, right? And that, so it's basically got the same shape, but the center point has been shifted due to obviously what we did with the data set. Now, the other kind of issue that we run into is that the buckets might be different, right? So if I look at the bucket sizes over here, then obviously uh, Excel is gonna choose a different bucket range to try to optimize the bucket. So it had a 0.23 difference and 65 buckets. If I go onto this chart, we're, let's check it out. I'm gonna click down here. This one's got a 0.22 difference. So I'd like to make that bucket size difference like the same. So I'm gonna go into the bin width and I'm gonna make this 0.23 just to have the, the, the distance from the buckets the same. So now, now you've got kind of the width or, or the, you know, the, how, how far apart the buckets are from 60 to 60, 48, 60, 25 to 60, 48 is the same distance as these buckets. The buckets aren't exactly the same, but you know, we have similar kind of buckets, which will be, make it more comparable. Now, what I'd like to do is put this other set of data uh, into this histogram and have them you know, showing two sets of data on the one histogram, but that's not always easy to do using a histogram. That's why we might, that's one reason you might use a bar chart. So in other words, it, like if I went on this data right here and I went to the chart designs and to my data tab and I look in my, my data, I can see, I, I just added that one. If I see this is series one and that's gonna be the data that I just picked up, you might say, well, can't I just add another data and say this is would be for men the other one's for you know women and then take this set of data and then say okay so now i've got my two data sets but it's not actually changing you know the graph here so so one way i can do this is try to is try to use is make this into my buckets again so we did this before we made our buckets now what i'd like to do is have the exact same buckets that i have over here on, on this side as well and just extend the buckets so that they also include what needs to be included for the new data set, which is gonna go down uh, possibly lower on the lower end. So let's go, let's go ahead and see if we can copy this. I can copy these. I'm just gonna take this whole uh, uh, bucket series. I'm not gonna copy the results, but I just wanna copy the bucket ranges so i'm going to say copy and i said control c and i'm going to put them in the same kind of area which is which is next to the chart so it's in uh 17 or c17 i could put that over here uh in 17 i would like to put it up here i'm going to squish this up a bit and 17 and paste it so there we have it. So now we've got our same kind of series of data here. And then we've got our formulas. So now what we need to do is extend the low end to take it down to this around 57.49, for example. So I'm gonna have to pull this down a bit and extend the top bit out because this is going you know, from lowest to highest. So a couple ways we can do that. I'm gonna just select this whole range and just kind of drag it down. So I'm gonna select the whole thing and say let's let's actually drag it down i'll scroll back up now we could cut it and paste it so notice it's the same thing to put my cursor here and drag it down as it is to say right click and cut and then uh paste it down here a bit that's doing the same the same thing uh we can also insert cells above it if we wanted to and push it down so you could like say i want to insert cells above that I can't insert a whole row, but I can select those cells and say insert 
and then I want to shift the cells down and so that's another way that you can kind of uh, move them down now when I when I made these references notice we started here at the bottom bucket and so that's kind of like our starting point let's make that yellow and then I added uh, 0.23 up uh, a, 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 as as we went up so now I'm going the other way I need to subtract 0.23 so I'm gonna say this bucket is equal to the prior bucket minus 0.23 and this bucket is the prior bucket minus 0 0.23 0 0.23 <laughs> and so then we can copy that up and I'm gonna copy it up till I get it to like that 57 so I'm gonna copy these up and see how much room we have 5706 we just need to make it go down to 5749 around so the buckets aren't lining up exactly but uh 57 let's do it right here so it's not going to look exactly like this histogram the bucket ranges but we have the similar distance between the buckets that we're trying to line up between our two data sets all right so then i'm going to copy this up as well so i'll just take this formula and copy it up and then boom I'll get rid of the yellow we don't need the yellow here that's too much yellow there's too much yellow going on around here I'll make this a little bit larger and then I'm gonna make my my a uh, formula for this data set I'll redo the formula uh, so I'm gonna be pulling from the the woman's data set and we want it to be if it's greater than uh, if, if we want it to count the the number of data if it's greater than 5729 uh, and less than or equal to 5752 so here's our if formula again I'll try to scroll in a bit so that we can see it a, a little bit more clearly so I'm gonna say this equals if or no sorry count if and then multiple conditions so I'm gonna have an s on that ifs and then double click the formula or add the brackets the range so I'm just gonna pick the range there's the range and then I'm gonna say comma and then the criteria the criteria needs to be greater than so I need to put like text in there so I have to put quotes around it greater than quotes around it and then add which I need to do with an and and then the cell reference which is this cell so everything that's greater than that cell that's the first condition comma second condition criteria range so the criteria range selecting the women again and then comma so what's the criteria so this time it's got to be quotes uh, less than or equal to because if it lands right on that number we're, that will put it in this bucket in the quotes and then and attaching this number so there's the argument so it's got to be greater than 57 uh, 29 count it count these numbers if it's greater than 57 29 uh, or less than or equal to 57 52 is what this argument is saying so I'm gonna say okay and nothing's uh, in that first one all right let's copy it down though putting my cursor on the fill handle and copying it down copy it down copy it down copy it down <laughs> and so there we have it and so now we've got some action happening here uh, in the middle range so same formula just copied down to these two cell references took the same range so now I can now I can add make I can mimic this histogram it's not gonna be the exact same because we we made the buckets a little bit different but we made the distance between each bucket the same so possibly I don't need to select the whole range because I got a lot of zeros down here because this data range was what was included in the in the men's uh, number so there you know there's more on the tail end on the upside so maybe we could stop the histogram you know like around here so what I'll do is I'll select the data if I wanted to mirror that histogram we could select the data from here down to like here let's say let's pick up one zero and then I don't need anything below that and then this time I'm gonna go to the insert but uh, charts group but not a histogram but rather the bar chart the bar chart boom all right and so let's pull that to the right and we can compare I should have scrolled up before I put it in place 
Now I gotta scoot it up like this. Oh, it's so annoying. Okay, and then I can pull this one over. And then, so now we can kind of see them on top of each other. So we can compare and we can contrast. It's the same thing. Why do you have to say both compare and contrast? One implies the, okay, whatever. You have to say both them because it sounds cooler when you compare and contrast. Otherwise, you're just doing one thing. You're just comparing. And that's like easy. If you do two things like compare and contrast, then <clears throat> you're doing more work. All right, so if we click on the actual data, that'll open up our format bar. If I go into my, my uh, series options, I can lessen the width between these. So if I put it at like 5%, you know, it looks more like histogram-y histogram like. And then, uh, and then I could go up top, I'm on the chart, I could go into uh, the, the chart here and we could add the chart labels. So here's our labels. I could put those. It only gave me the one label. Hold on a second. I got to select the chart itself. Let's undo that last label. Sometimes it's a little finicky because I only because it thinks I only have that one thing selected. So I'm going to try to click off of that thing, go to the chart details, and then say now uh, data labels uh, up top. And so there we go. And then I can format those data labels going into the data labels and getting rid of the decimals possibly. So if you go into the, the, clicking the labels, label options, and then it's in general, I wanna make it to currency or number. And then I have the option of removing the decimals, zero decimals. And so that's a little cleaner. I could put the data labels up top on this one as well. And we can go uh, insert, uh, not insert, chart design data labels. So let's put them uh, on top again. So we have a little bit of a difference here because again, the bucket sizes aren't exactly the same. But the point is here now, I can take, I can take uh, these two data sets and basically combine them together on one chart which is obviously super cool, something that you know everyone's looking forward to, but we're running long on time, so we'll do it next time. So stay tuned uh, and come back next time when we'll put them together. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Let's clean it up while we're here before we do that. Uh, and then I'll make this, let's make this blue and bordered, blue and bordered make this blue and bordered actually that one could be yellow maybe because that was our midpoint and then this could be well not the midpoint that was where we had to start adding more data or something uh brackets and border let's put some borders around this one is there anything else we can clean up here we might the y column why is the y so wide is what I want to know. Why is the Y so wide? Let's let's make it smaller. We need a skinny Y. A skinny Y. Why? Because it's too wide. And then we're going to go down here and say if the if the it's we're looking at height data for a height of that height, it shouldn't be that wide. For that tall for that height, the width should be less on average home tab uh, font group let's put a, a blue and borders around this one so that looks good Mui B to the N all right so next time we'll uh, come we'll combine the data and we'll see what happens if I combine all the data in one histogram versus you know if I if I try to put the two data sets like side by side on a histogram